Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here. Thank you so much for joining me. What I want to do is give you an idea of how to use sliding to possibly make your soloing a little more creative. Now, it doesn't need to be fast or anything like that. It's just learning how to creatively move between some of the positions of your guitar. And if you wind up being able to use this information, please do me a favor, like the video and subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's look at this. Right now what I'm doing is I'm playing in C-sharp minor pentatonic, and you could go anywhere you want with this, but let's just say we were looking at the first position of C-sharp minor pentatonic. Okay, now oftentimes we'll learn that position and we'll start learning how to move up and down inside there and different kinds of things like that, which is wonderful. But there's a great technique that you can learn if you learn how to play some of the positions that surround the first position or main position or main box or whatever you want to call it that you're learning how to play right now. Now this does require some knowledge of how the fretboard connects together um, and I'll, I'll make sure that there's something available for you to be able to see this but if I was playing C sharp minor pentatonic in what we call the first position or main position <laughs> right here at the 9th and 12th frets. Well, what's really cool is if you start learning that you can actually play those five notes, pentatonic, in other positions on the guitar, you actually start learning how to connect these positions together. So let's say you learn how to play the fifth position, which I often teach students uh, when they first learn their first pos position because you can work on this side of it. So we're gonna go down to the seventh fret, we're gonna play seven, nine, seven, nine. 6969 7979. So it's pretty symmetrical. And the nice thing is is that it connects right on to the ninth fret of the first position. So you you learn to see the fifth position and the first position connected together. Now what we want to do is we want to start learning how to slide into that fifth position, so to speak, just for some creativity, just for some different ideas. Now you could move down there and you could solo and then you can move back to the first position and solo, all kinds of different things. But let's think of that fifth position as simply a, a, a place to go to utilize some sliding. Now if you think about this first position that I'm playing in, my first finger plays all these nines right here. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that first finger to slide down to one of these other notes of the fifth position here. So for instance, if I played this. Now, I'm not doing that note is right here. So it's, it's not a new note or anything. It's the same note I could play. But I'm giving it this slide effect which then enables me to slide back, which is what I really like, is I'll slide down into that seven, but then I'll take and go to the ninth fret of the third string and I'll slide right back to the 11. So I do this. Now you can pick what you want, you can hammer what you want, you don't have to you know, hammer on or pull off or slide where I'm doing it, I'm just saying, you get these really nice sort of flow uh, movements by adding these slides so at any point in time as I'm moving across this scale I can slide down into that fifth position and then I could go back and slide back into the position I was just in now you'll notice I'm sliding with my third finger because I want to wind up with the, the right finger when I get back to that first position so I can continue on. Now right there, I'm sliding down. Now I'm on the fourth string, ninth fret. I'm sliding down to the sixth. And I'm sliding back again. And again, 
again, there's no particular rhyme or reason to the licks that I'm playing. I'm just trying to show you how I move from that first position into the fifth position, instead of always thinking of it like... You know, whenever we get into a position, we tend to just sort of move up and down like that. And that's not what I want to do. I want to utilize this position as more of a creative process of causing these, these slides. <laughs> You see? Now, I can get down into this fifth position and then spend some time there. You know, I can do something like that too, and that's perfectly fine. The point isn't, isn't again, it isn't the licks. The point is try and practice the slide. Let me show you a couple of things. So just try and do something like this once. And then continue on with whatever it is you'd like to do from there. Or try it on the third string. You know, whatever it is you'd like from there. So there's a lot of super cool stuff that you can do like that just by implementing the concept of the slide. Don't worry about how fast it is. You know, what I like to do is I'll, I'll come up with an idea or a movement, you know, concept, and then I'll just sit and practice it over and over and over at a nice slow pace, just so my brain really gets what I'm trying to do. And then I can decide what do I want to pick and what do I want to use pull-offs or wh how do I want to play this? You know, do I want to pick all that or I don't want to do some pull-offs? And that's another topic of conversation is the approach that you would take. But if you play it slow enough, you don't really need to worry too much about that. It's when you start trying to make it fast that you really got to dial in how you're approaching it. Well, how are you picking this sort of thing or what slurs are you using and that sort of stuff. So give it a try, see what it does for your playing and let me know if I can help you at all in the comments. Uh, please share it with anybody that might be able to use it and subscribe to the channel so you're always um, informed when I come up with new videos. So take care, stay positive and I'll talk to you soon.